Okay, so for us to rollerize the rear of the case of a TH400 or 480E, uh, what, what we need to do is we need to replace the um, uh, three-tab steel selective washer that sits in the very rear of the case and the four-tab Babbitt washer that sits on the underside of the output shaft's um, mounting flange and replace them with the uh, bearing from a TH350 uh, you know, late model uh, pump and a end play shim from the same. So for us to get an understanding of where we need to start, how many shims we need to uh, add, and um, so that we can set our end play, what we wanna do is take these two things and measure them and see how thick they are together. So this is telling me it's 153 thousandths or so thick between these two um, these two thrust washers. So we'll come over here and we'll do the same with our bearing and our shim. And it's going to be pretty much the exact same, so 153 thousandths. So what this tells us is it matches the um, amount of space, if you will, that each of these two takes up in the case with the uh, you know corresponding thickness. We're not changing any of the spacing relationships that exist between the gear train and you know these erstwhile objects by swapping in these two things. So we can add or delete shims as we need to when we go to measure final end play. Uh, I like to keep rear gear end play on a TH400 and a 480E to anywhere between 6 and 12, 6 and 13 thousandths. Uh, that's where I like to shoot for. So this gives us a good place to start. And when you measure this, you actually want to measure the bearing dry so that um, the fluid doesn't necessarily interfere. I mean, if you measure it after soaking it, it's not really the end of the world. I mean, it's going to have fluid in it anyway, but I like to measure it dry first. So anyway, now that we have that measurement, we know that um, this, this combination right here is going to work for us. At least give us a starting point. We can then proceed to assembling the gear train and taking an initial end play measurement once the gear train is installed in the transmission. All right, we're almost ready to start putting things back into the case. Uh, there's a few things that we need to do first to prep it. Uh, one of those is gonna be to install the rear bushing. I'm gonna drive the old bushing out and then install the new one. Move you a little bit closer so you can see the installation of the new bushing. <clears throat> and because we're going to rollerize the rear case, I want to install the bushing so that it protrudes into the case just a little bit, maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so, and that will allow the bearing to locate or give something the bearing to locate on. So normally you drive it in flush, so it's perfectly even with the bore, like so. But in this case, we're going to drive it in just a little bit be uh, beyond flush. All right, so I'm going to turn the case upright. And let's go ahead and test fit the bearing. So what you want to see is the bearing locating 
but at the same time, you do not want the bushing to be uh, beyond the surface of the bearing like so. And this is how it's going to go in the case. The silver side is going to be up. And the reason for that is you do not want the bearing as it's rotating to come in contact with the bushing. Otherwise, you know, it might start to cut into the bushing. Got the dial indicator set up, we're ready to take an end play reading. So what I'll do is take a long screwdriver and insert it right underneath the uh, ring gear and then just pry upwards on it until I can't, you know, until I can't travel any further. So it looks like about 12 and a half thousands since I'm not quite returning to zero. Uh, let me zoom in, get a better view of the indicator itself. Yeah, it looks like about 11 and a half to 12 thousandths, which is perfect. 